All right. Good morning. We are live. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Regina. How are you, my friend? I'm good. I'm happy to be here. How are you? Good morning. Me too. Me too. I'm super, super, super good. And I am so happy and honored and excited to have you on today for a lot of reasons. Oh, thank you. I'm super happy to be here. I'm so excited to see what you're creating and putting out there. Happy to be here with your audience. Thank you. Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because obviously you've been on this path with me since the the beginning of the, or the beginning of the end of the beginning or however that looks like. Um, you know, a lot of people know that I, in the last couple of years, have shed a lot of, I would say, my old self and entered literally into a new, a new self, even with my name change. Mm -hmm. And even though it's not official, um, you know, by legal papers and everything like my given name is Regina Rosa. Mm -hmm. And I was given Celeste in a meditation many years ago, like eight years ago. And it was funny because the day that I saw that I remember being like, ah, in the med, I saw like this image, it was like a silhouette. And I saw the name. And uh, I thought, what's that about? And I just kind of put it on the shelf, so to speak, you know, and then I would see like little glimpses of the name here and there over the next few years. And I liked the name, but I didn't quite know what it meant for me until last year. And so one of the reasons I wanted to have you on the show today, of course, is because you're my friend, mm -hmm. but also because you have been so, I mean, supportive is, is one way, right? One way to describe it, but also you've been like the candle for me when I was having a really hard time being a candle for myself. And I remember specifically the day, it was either January or February of last year. And I was going through a really tough time. I just moved back to Florida and um, a lot of hesitation around moving back, but I knew I had to. And I remember you were starting a course and it was called the, the Miracles course. Right. I really wanted to do it because I believe in miracles and I was doing, you know, reading around Course in Miracles and it was a coaching program and I had never up to that point spent that kind of money on myself for coaching. And I remember you so loved and sternly, um, not stern, that's not the right word, uh, lovingly and um, persistent, right? But loving. You, you were holding space for me and you just, I remember some of our texts and they were just like, you know, how much are you, how much do you value yourself? And at that point I didn't, which was why it was so interesting. Cause like the words you use, the energy I felt, it was so poignant. And so what I wanted to do today was talk a little bit about the work you do, because the work you do is what helped me get to the work that I do. And now we are doing a lot of similar work, but supporting each other. And we'll talk a little bit about soul language what that looks like and yeah and just you yeah. know having you having you in my world has just been such a tremendous gift on so many levels wow oh, thank you wow that's so sweet it's so so nice the way you remember and retold all of that story and i remember it really clearly too and it's just amazing to see the transformation that you've been through in the last i can't believe it's only a year and a half when you said january of last year i'm like oh my god are you sure? Like it was January of like three years ago. Um, it seems like lifetimes, right? Because I think when you, when we shift, it happens quickly sometimes, right? It's like slow and then it's fast. And so it feels slow when we're in the thick of it. But then when you look back over the time frame, it's like, wow, all of that in one year. So you have like completely transformed in the last year. And it's so exciting to see what you're putting out there into the world and watch you find your your space and your voice and, you know, your audience and tribe and all of the things. So, yeah, I know, I, I know that, <laughs> I know that when people invest in themselves in coaching for the first time, it's a big deal. And probably people who are thinking of doing the membership with you or any other kind of coaching program sometimes, I mean, a lot of people say to me when they enroll in my programs, probably all of the people say, I've never spent this kind of money on myself. Like, I can't believe I'm doing this. 
And it doesn't even matter what the price point is, right? <laughs> even no, if it, yeah, it doesn't matter, matter you know, like <laughs> it's funny because my, my course prices have evolved over the last two years. And it really like, you no, know, you know, in the beginning at the lower price points and then at the higher price points, everyone's always like, you know, I've never spent this kind of money on myself. Um, but like you said, you know, you came to see that you were worth it, that the money that we spend on others and on other things, we can invest in ourselves and in our own personal development and spiritual development. And that there's actually nothing more important, you know, our ability to be successful in every single area of our lives, whether it's our career, our job, whether it's with finances, whether it's in our relationships, like nothing depends more depends on anything more than how much we invest in our own spiritual personal development so it's like you're living proof of that right and and so am i i mean everyone who's a coach has probably at some point made a big investment in themselves and said like yeah i i have to be worth this if i'm going to tell other people they're worth it right it's like how how do we practice what we what we teach and what we preach. Like, I have to believe I'm worth this if I'm gonna tell other people they're worth it. So we invest in ourselves, we go through the process and then we can lead other people through the process, which I know is what you're doing now, emerging as a leader in your field. So it's just beautiful to watch, it's exciting. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. And I, you know, I just, as you were talking, I remember that day when we were, we met at prayer dance with- Oh, right, that must have, that was like three years ago, I think. Yeah, and yeah, I was and still half. in Montana, but I came here for the winter and we went oh. to lunch after prayer dance. And I remember seeing your card and it was white and it had the pink, right? Same color as your shirt and right. your blouse. And, um, oh, and yeah. Wow, I love her style. It's so elegant and it's so clean and pure was the, guy, oh. was the word that I kept getting, like pure and um, like angelic. You know, I knew that I wanted to work with you. I knew that I wanted to do stuff with you. Of course, I went through, you know, like rock bottom. And I felt like, you know, basically worthless, right? And I felt like I just didn't know what my purpose was and what I was up to. And even though I knew many times before that, my purpose, it was like, it was the weirdest thing. It was like, I was a very confident person. I was very, um, I felt like I knew what I was here for. But then life happens, right? And sometimes it's it's almost like what you wish for, what you ask for, you get, right? And I had been asking, like, make it crystal clear. Mm -hmm. What is my reason for being here? Mm -hmm. I was asking mm -hmm. the universe and show me, guide me, right? What is my what is my soul's purpose here? What is my life lesson? What am I supposed to do? And it did. <laughs> it showed me, and it wasn't pretty, but um, it was worth every ounce of, of sweat and tears because you showed up and a couple other angels that I've written about and I've spoken about over the last couple months. And it was because of you guys that I was able to step into that space in myself where I was like, wow, okay, this is like, like it was almost like a snake, right? I had to like, th like shed old layers and old pieces of myself, step into this newer version of me. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I remember, you know, the miracles course and, and what that was all about. And I remember even one of the exercises that you shared, which was be, what are you grateful for that you're not like something like gra using gratitude and like getting um, real about what's not. Oh, right. grateful about. Do you remember that one? Yeah. Being grateful for what you're not grateful for. Yeah. And like yeah. That was paradigm, right? Because it was like yeah. taking off all of the, the, the masks right yeah the yes like oh i'm pollyanna and i'm happy all the time and my life is so beautiful like no life sucks sometimes <laughs> let's talk about that you know yeah. and, and that's what helped me discover the internal peace stuff and that's mm. now my movement right is helping people access internal peace and i mean i lose my all the time in the sense of my i get frustrated i get sad i get upset oh, i know how to get back to peace and calm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I think anyone that claims they have it all together all the time, it's just a story that they're creating and they're, they want the world to see it that way. Yeah. And, and you've been one of the examples of no life is real and raw yeah. and perfect, but it's beautiful at the same time. Right. And, um, 
and I just, I remember wanting to work with you so much because I was going through some. Aww. A little sneeze there. Ah, bless you. Bless you. <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Bless you. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of my own stuff. And I remember there was so much confidence in your voice of you're going to get through this. Yeah. And I remember even one day saying to myself, but how? Like, how am I going to get through this? You know, and I text you in the middle of the day or the evening. And I was just like, you know, some of the dark stuff happening for me. And you were always like, I see the light. I see you shining. And now I'm saying that to my students. And my All clients, right. like, you're going to get through this, you know? Yeah. So, um, yeah, you can hold that space because you've been through it yourself. I think one of the, the best things I've learned on this journey is to um, to see how every experience we have can be used for good. And when you're really in the thick of it, to remember that the universe has you here for a reason. You know, you're even in the even in the dark side, even in the negative side, even in the challenging situations. There's always a reason why you're there, and you are going to be able to one day tell the story of how you overcame this thing and how it changed you and how you did it and how you got through it, and that is going to be useful to someone else. So it's like whenever we feel like, oh, my gosh, this is insurmountable. Remember that you are here because the universe thinks you will be able to use it for good. You will be of service in this way by telling your story. So, you know, I always believe you can't really you can't teach what you don't know. It won't be authentic. Right. So unless you really experience depression, you're not going to be able to talk to someone with depression and say to them, you know, there is another side of this. Unless you've really experienced like the tumult of a really challenging relationship, you're never going to be able and then you are on the other side and you have a really wonderful relationship. You're never gonna be able to talk about that transformation with authenticity. So I try to only teach based on what I've been through, right? And then you get to take that you know, example and you apply it to your own life and you get to teach about what you've been through. So that's why there's so many teachers and so many students and everyone finds the person who resonates with them. But I think knowing that what you're going through is always being used for your highest good, that you're not there because the universe wants to make you suffer, but because the universe thinks that this experience that you're having will at some point be used to benefit other people. And that's what you've done. You've taken your experience of um, challenge and, you know, being in the fog and in the thick of it and said, there's another side. And even though you couldn't see it at the time, that's what mentors and coaches are for. You know, they hold the space for us to get to the other side until we can see that the we could see the other side ourselves. you know? And, and um, so I think the best thing, you know, the best thing people, one of the hardest things to do is really to ask for help. To, to sign up for a program or to go to a coach and say, can you help me? And this is, you know, to be honest about what we're struggling with, because there are these two different kind of worlds that we live in. One is the world of promotion and social media and what people put out there. And um, I've definitely received, you know, I've had tough conversations too, where people maybe don't like what I'm putting out there, don't like the image of myself that I portray. But if I say to them, like, do you read the words of what I say? Like, <laughs> I'm always telling what the real story is. I'm, I don't ever try to make up a story of everything being easy or perfect. Because for me on my journey, that never resonated. All that did was make me feel bad. It was when I heard the stories of people who had really told the truth about how difficult it was and then talked about getting to the other side that I felt hope. And that's exactly what you do. And I think it's a good model of coaching to have out there to start a movement of people who are telling the truth, you know, just like, yeah, there are ups and downs, there's, <laughs> there's challenges, and then it gets less challenging. And the longer you do the work, the quicker you can bounce back, but that doesn't mean it's without its challenges. So I just think I just want to applaud you and your audience and anyone who's out there who that, you know, you feel like, oh, my gosh, why isn't my life like so and so, you know, those comparison traps and those um, the tendency to fall into self pity and like, why is it so easy for everyone else? And why is it not easy for me? Remember that, you know, first of all, not everything you see out there is real. But second of all, what you're going through is for a reason and your story will one day be used to help and inspire and give hope to someone else and that's important you know that's a big part of our lives is to be of service so if we can do what you've done and turn every experience into an opportunity for service then we're doing a good thing 
Yeah, Seva. You know, I think yeah. of Seva, which in, in the yoga world, which mm -hmm. is and you know, that is basically coming from service, right? And it's, you know, it, it is, it's really, it's amazing how when we shift from what's in it for me, mm -hmm. to how can I serve? Mm -hmm. What's in it for me just gets taken care of. Like it doesn't, I don't even to think about that, right? And my mind often wants to go there, like, well, you know, tit for tat, or like, how can I make sure that I'm taken care of, you know, and I love Zig Ziglar and his message, which uh, has resonated with me all these years, even after he passed away, which is if you help enough people get what they want, you'll always get what you want. Mm, that's and, nice. You know, and now I'm, I, I even change it to what I need, right? If you help enough people get what they want, you'll always have your needs met. Mm -hmm. because that's the truth is like, the more I serve, the less I really want. Mm, yeah. I'm content with, with less in a way. And that's, and, and I, I love what you were saying about the trap. That's really, to me, that's what peace is about. It's mm -hmm. having peace in the moment. Like the world is on fire. The world is suffering. The world is chaotic. You know, you didn't get your stimulus check or someone upset you or the dog ate your homework. Like there's always going to be something to be upset about. And to Always. have that internal turmoil, you know? So that's something that I think, you know, going back to the piece, like that's really the part for me that feels very authentic. And, and that's what I feel I'm here for is to help people be reminded of that because peace gets robbed from us. In, yeah. In these little moments of suffering, which create bigger suffering. And, um, and so I really appreciate, you know, have you shown up for me and, and what I love too about our relationship is we're friends and like we have this, uh, we've always had this, I feel. And I, you know, I pray that it'll continue is this like respect for each other. Like, you know, when I'm in the coaching seat, you know, it's, I know I'm in the coaching seat when I, and, and then when I'm in the friend seat, I'm in the friend seat and vice versa. Like we, now we've talked about doing retreats together mm -hmm. and like that just melts my heart. Cause I'm like, wow, I'm at a place now where we can talk about that. Well, a year and a half ago, it was just a thought. Mm -hmm. And now like, you know, and, and uh, obviously with COVID and everything going on, I know things might shift, but you have an upcoming retreat in Mexico yeah, it's still planned for October. Yeah, the end of October. We're still planning to do it as of right now. You know, things might shift, like you said. Um, you and I had talked about maybe doing something in 2021. So, you know, I'm confident. I believe that this will pass at some point, right? We can't say when, and I'm not going to pressure anyone to go on retreat if they don't feel ready. But um, this will pass, right? Like all things in life, in the world, everything passes. So, when that happens, we want to be ready with our offering because people will want to travel again. They will want to do the inner work and they will want to be in person and in community, right? It's a long time to be alone. And, you know, but luckily, if you if you have a family, you're sheltered with your family. But a lot of people I know who are on their own, it's like they're ready for that connection again. And my students are texting me like, I need a vacation. The retreat can't come soon enough, you know? <laughs> um, yeah. So I, we're going to Mexico. It's a yoga and rejuvenation retreat in um, a really small town outside of Puerto Vallarta called Chicala. It's this beautiful little fishing village that's really untouched by the world in some ways. <laughs> There's no big resorts there. There's only this one really grounded, beautiful and um, very comfortable retreat center. It's a nice retreat center. You're not like roughing it, but you are away from the from the scene, so to speak, of Puerto Vallarta. And they actually haven't had any cases of COVID there in the village, luckily, thank God, I keep, I keep in touch with them, see how they're doing. And they've, they've been untouched by COVID. But of course, um, the world is uncertain right now and we need these tools for accessing peace and miracles and our inner self and our higher self even more than before. You know, I every day of this COVID, I, I thank my higher power that I've been doing this work for um, well, like six to seven years now, I became a yoga teacher in 2013. So I would say that was kind of the first up level in my journey where energetically I started, you know, to kind of tune to different, um, 
different frequencies of being <laughs> that that started me on a deeper journey. But I was like, you know, I'm so grateful. I've been doing this work for a long time because without these tools, I think I would literally fall apart. I mean, this was not easy what we just went through as individuals, as families, as a society, as a nation, as a, as a world, you know, this is, this was tough. And without these tools, I'm sure I would have fallen apart. I mean, I don't know how people without these tools got out of bed in the morning. <laughs> it, it could be so debilitating. Or, you know, if you listen to the news, it makes it feel like the apocalypse is here, right? So it's like, we really need tools and methods and teachers and people who can help us stay in light. And I actually remembered that um, I think you signed up for the course, the miracles course, the very first time I ran it, which was um, January 2019, the night after we did your DNA activation, your spiritual DNA oh, activation. Yeah. We had gone to yeah. the ashram together and then I did your spiritual DNA activation. And I can really see that working in your life because it wasn't more than, you know, it was maybe six months after your spiritual DNA activation that you really like entered a different kind of light. Like, it, you know, at the time it felt like you'd been in it forever. But from January when we worked together um, and when we d you did the course in January, we did your spiritual DNA activation in January. By, by May, June, you were really kind of coming on to the other side of it. And, you know, for me, I see that kind of working in the background because of the spiritual DNA activation. And you'll also talk about your soul languages practices. But what I know and see for people in the spiritual DNA activation is the light goes on really quickly and they start to shift into their purpose. It's like anything that's not aligned gets removed really quickly. Like it can't stick. And that's, I think, really what happened to you. Like you really quickly between the spiritual DNA activation and the course, and I, and you did the course twice. So I saw at the end of the course in May or June, um, you were shift, you had shifted very much, you know? So it's like interesting to see when you look back on it, that when you do this work, it can shift really quickly. And I know that too, because I had my own spiritual DNA activation one year before I did yours. And within six months of doing that, my life had completely changed. I had a different job. <laughs> I I was I had a different relationship. I had a different home. Everything in my life changed after that. So it's like, you know, the proof is kind of just in what happens in your life. And if it works, then you do it, right? And that's and that's now what you're teaching people with soul languages and internal peace and your whole membership and those offerings. It's like you give people a basket of tools, and it's like if they use them, you know, they will transform. But of course, we have to use them. <laughs> it's so true. It's yeah. So true. Thank you for what you said, because, yeah, it is that. And it's, you know, I think what happens with tools is there's sometimes it's like we forget box. Yeah. And that's exactly it. It was like the light literally like on and it was like a light switch. And I just, yeah. you know, even <laughs> it's funny, even this week. I had a really interesting situation that happened with uh, technology and with a couple of people I'm working with on, on the membership and design work and all this stuff. And somebody I'm working with even said to me, you're moving so fast. I can't keep up. <laughs> and I was like, kind of upset because I was like, what do you mean? Like, and then I was like, oh yeah, like everybody's at a different pace. And the beauty in that is like the recovering perfection in me right gets to <sighs> take you know, a breath <laughs> take a breath you know and and uh you know it's it's amazing how time flies like i'm like oh my god it's already been 20 25 minutes yeah so, wrap up quick i just wanted to thank you so much nicole and i wanted to you know mention something that you you shared and i'm so grateful about the soul language journey mm. which it's not something i talk a lot about just like you are with a dna activation it's like it's yeah. a segment of your work and it's probably right. the most impactful of all, right? Like yeah. I've even had my real estate clients, I've talked to them about soul language and I have a couple that have dipped their toe into it. And I see their changes. I see yeah. how they're growing. I see how they're becoming more um, confident in their real estate investing and how they're moving forward. Mm -hmm. And it's amazing how these little, I mean, they're, they're so subtle but they're so powerful. And I can't wait to learn more about the DNA activation. I know we talked about it. And that yeah, maybe initiation one day for you too. That would be fantastic. 
Yeah. So what's, what's one thing that you would share, you would want anybody that might be watching now or later to know about what it's like to be uh, two, to be two things. One, a miracle worker like you are. <laughs> and then two, what's it like to be an internal peace renegade? Very good questions. Well, okay. So um, I think they're connected, right? They're different terms. They're different words for the same thing, whether you're a miracle maker, whether you're, um, you know, uh, an internal peace renegade, whether you're whatever you are, you know, a manifester, a yoga teacher, or this, or that, right? They're just labels and they're just words. And the truth behind it is that, you know, to put it in words, which Unfortunately, words are always just going to be words. But when you, it's like when you have that sense of peace, you know, when you have a good meditation or you're in Shavasana after a yoga class, or like you said, you feel the light go on after a, D, a DNA activation or, or a soul language session, or you do a meditation with your soul languages or with your spirit guides or your higher self, whatever it is, you kind of, it's like you get like a glimpse of the light and the, a glimpse of possibility and like a glimpse of the infinite, right? It's like, oh my God, we're, we're part of something that's so much bigger. You know, it's like we, we're this one globe <laughs> and we're in this whole galaxy and then there are other galaxies and there's this power behind all of it that's so much greater than what we remember on a daily basis. So when you do something like initiation in the mystery school or a DNA activation or a soul language session. To me, it's like, they're just ways for you to access something greater than yourself that you can then bring in and anchor into the planet and use to guide others, right? Cause it's not, we, we heal ourselves first and foremost because we wanna be able to heal others, right? And we can't heal others until we do the work to heal ourselves. So. It's all a symbiotic relationship, but the point is just to be bringing light in from this higher source, you know, and um, I call it God, but I also call it higher self, higher power, universe, nature, infinite, you know, and everyone has their own term for it. But you, you want to access that and you want to bring it in <laughs> and you want to always remember that you are an instrument of that higher power, right? We're not, if if we start doing it only for ourselves, and this is difficult to do, right? Ego always gets in it. But if we're doing it only for ourselves, we'll meet up with a lot of frustration and obstacles. <laughs> and because there are challenges, right? Being a coach, there are challenges. Being a human being, there are challenges. So if we're just doing it from the smaller place, it can get very difficult, which is why the, the tools of being an internal peace renegade or a soul language practitioner or an adept in the mystery school, all of these things are ways for you to just come back to the light. So that's, you know, what it's like is just remembering like I am here on purpose. And when I'm in a difficult place, I, I usually pray the prayer. This was taught to me. Everything I teach was taught to me. I mean, you know, I, my, my, my divine revelation is limited, but, um, but I, I was taught a prayer, you know, please help me use this challenging situation to help others. And when I'm on the other side of this, I will tell the story of how I got through it so that that will benefit others. So to me, that's like, you know, being an internal peace renegade, a miracle maker. My primary purpose is to teach people that you have all the power you need within you. And it's about accessing that, but accessing it not from a small place of ego, but, you know, in yoga, we always joke, it's like we say, I am Brahman, Brahman, right? Like I am that infinite power, aham Brahma asmi. But if you walk around saying to people, no, I am Brahman, I am Brahman, I am the God, I am the God. It's like, what are you talking about, you nut job? Like no one wants to listen to you. But if you know inside, and you know, I don't know this fully, I'm not enlightened, but if you know inside that there is a higher purpose for you and that you're connected to something greater and that you don't, you don't really know, but that you're trying to get there, then you get to be that example for people, you know, like, like I was for you in a, a year and a half ago, and like you are for others now. So that's to me what it's really, you know, it's like, kind of a long answer, but that's what it's about. <laughs> I <love your> long <laughs> answers. <laughs> and, you. and you didn't talk too much about soul languages, but I hope you will kind of tell people a little more about it and how they can use it as a tool. And how that fits into your membership because i think that is kind of a very special offering that you feel very connected to in your heart and that can bring people you know new new tools yeah thank yeah. you thank you so much and it is it's it's one of those very 
you know, it's a little abstract, right? But it's definitely something that changed my life. And mm -hmm. it's all part of the tapestry, the right. recipe, so to speak. And so, yeah. uh, you know, maybe we'll do another another show too. On that. soul languages. Yeah, I think people need to know that, you know, even um, whatever they choose to do with the soul languages after having the session with you is powerful, you know, the same way you having your energy clearing and, and cord cutting and spiritual DNA activation put something in motion for you that maybe you never could directly relate back, <laughs> but it was working in the background, right? I think soul languages do the same thing. Even if you do or don't work with your soul languages after the session, which of course you would prefer people do, but they maybe won't. Just having the session with you where you kind of call in these guides and get your, um, get your expertise. And I remember from our session together, you really had such powerful intuition and such powerful clarity and such powerful direction for me with the soul languages kind of speaking through you. Like you really were that divine instrument giving very, very clear direction just in that one session. So it really has, you know, it's, I can tell from your confidence when you do it, when you do the soul language session, that this is one of your um, gifts to bring out into the world. So it's good for people to know, you know, that there is power in doing the session. And I didn't really understand what soul language was, but I was happy to see you offering something to the world and I wanted to participate in it, you know. And so I came in kind of like not so not like a soul, not so particularly interested in soul languages, but more interested in you, Regina. But I really like saw the passion that you had when you did it and, and the value in having these paradigms for how to connect with your higher self or your guides, you might call them. Um, you call them soul languages, right? <laughs> They're aspects of your soul. So like, I just want to tell people that the session is very, very powerful and that this is clearly something that you are adept in and that you are bringing out into the world. And so I really encourage people, even though it seems kind of esoteric to give it a try because it really makes a big difference and it is something that you excel in. Wow. Thank you. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much, Nicole. Thank you. What a, what a beautiful way to, uh, to wrap up. Yeah, perfect. Perfect timing. <laughs> I love you so much. I love I'm you. Excited. I know Hopefully we'll see each other right in person now. soon. Yes, we'll have to do a gathering or something, lunch or something. Yeah. Like awesome. Say hi to Paul for me and your I will. Thank you so much. Bye. Kisses. Bye. Bye.